Have you ever thought, how advanced can a civilization become? The technological advancement of a civilization will be dependent upon how much energy that civilization has at its disposal. In 1964, the astronomer Nikolai Kardashev presented a paper that sought to classify a civilization based on the amount of energy it uses. The scale he provided defined six types of civilization. What are these six different types of civilization and what would they be capable of? So join us in today's video as we are going to be talking all about the Kardashev scale type 1 to 6 civilizations. Do you find these scientific developments exciting? Are you constantly curious? Then like and subscribe to The Beyond for more interesting content like this. Having said that, let's get started. We have reached a turning point in society. According to renowned theoretical physicist Michio Kaku, the next 100 years of science will determine whether we perish or thrive. Will we remain a type zero civilization or will we advance and make our way into the stars? Experts assert that as a civilization grows larger and becomes more advanced, its energy demands will increase rapidly due to its population growth and the energy requirements of its various machines. With this in mind, the Kardashev scale was developed as a way of measuring a civilization's technological advancement based upon how much usable energy it has at its disposal. The scale was originally designed in 1964 by the Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, who was looking for signs of extraterrestrial life within cosmic signals. It has three base classes, each with an energy disposal level. Type 1, 10 to the 16th W, Type 2, 10 to the 26th W, and Type 3, 10 to the 36th W. Other astronomers have extended the scale to Type 4 and Type 5. The energy available to this kind of civilization would equal that of all energy available in not just our universe, but in all universes and in all timelines. These additions consider both energy access as well as the amount of knowledge the civilizations have access to. First, it is important to note that the human race is not even on this scale yet. Since we still sustain our energy needs from dead plants and animals, here on Earth, we are a lowly Type 0 civilization and we have a long way to go before being promoted to a Type 1 civilization. Kaku tends to believe that all things taken into consideration, we will reach type 100 in 100 to 200 years time. But what does each of these categories actually stand for in literal terms? A type 1 designation is a given to species who have been able to harness all the energy that is available from a neighboring star, gathering and storing it to meet the energy demands of a growing population. This means that we would need to boost our current energy production over 100,000 times to reach this status. However, being able to harness all Earth's energy would also mean that we could have control over all natural forces. Human beings could control volcanoes, the weather, and even earthquakes. At least, that is the idea. These kinds of feats are hard to believe, but compared to the advances that may still be to come, these are just basic and primitive levels of control. It's absolutely nothing compared to the capabilities of societies with higher rankings. The next step up, a Type II civilization, can harness the power of their entire star not merely transforming starlight into energy, but controlling the star. Various methods for this have been proposed, the most popular of which is the hypothetical Dyson Sphere. This device, if you want to call it that, would encompass every single inch of the star, gathering most, if not all, of its energy output and transferring it to a planet for later use. Alternatively, if fusion power, the mechanism that powers stars, had been mastered by the race, a reactor on a truly immense scale could be used to satisfy their needs. Nearby gas giants can be utilized for their hydrogen, slowly drained of life by an orbiting reactor. What would this much energy mean for a species? Well, nothing known to science could wipe out a Type II civilization. Take for instance, if humans survived long enough to reach this status and a moon-sized object entered our solar system on a collision course with our little blue planet, we'd have the ability to vaporize it out of existence. Or if we had time, we could move our planet out of the way, completely dodging it. But let's say we didn't want to move Earth. Are there any other options? Well, yes, because we'd have the capability to move Jupiter, or another planet of our choice, into the way. Pretty cool, right? So we've gone from having control over a planet to a star, which has resulted in us harboring enough disposable energy to essentially make our civilization immune to extinction. But now on to Type 3, where a species then becomes galactic traversers with knowledge of everything having to do with energy, resulting in them becoming a master race. In terms of humans, hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, both biological and mechanical, may result in the inhabitants of this Type 3 civilization being incredibly different from the human race as we know it. These may be cyborgs or cybernetic organisms, beings both biological and robotic, with the descendants of regular humans being a subspecies among the now highly advanced society. 
These wholly biological humans would likely be seen as being disabled, inferior, or unevolved by their cybernetic counterparts. At this stage, we would have developed colonies of robots that are capable of self-replication. Their population may increase into the millions as they spread out across the galaxy, colonizing star after star. And these beings might build Dyson spheres to encapsulate each one, creating a huge network that would carry energy back to the home planet. But stretching over the galaxy in such a manner would face several problems. Namely, the species would be constrained by the laws of physics, particularly light speed travel. That is, unless they develop a working warp drive or use that immaculate energy cache to master wormhole teleportation, they can only get so far. Kardashev believed a Type 4 civilization was too advanced and didn't go beyond Type 3 on his scale. He thought that surely this would be the extent of any species' ability. Many think so, but a few believe there is a further level that could be achieved. Type 4 civilizations would almost be able to harness the energy content of the entire universe and with that, they could traverse the accelerating expansion of space. Furthermore, advanced races of these species may live inside supermassive black holes. For previous methods of generating energy, these kinds of feats are considered impossible. A Type 4 civilization would need to tap into energy sources unknown to us using strange or currently unknown laws of physics. Type 5 Yes, Type 5 might just be the next possible advancement to such a civilization. Here, beings would be like gods, having the knowledge to manipulate the universe as they please. Now, as we said, humans are a very, very long way from ever reaching anything like this. But it's not to say that it cannot be achieved as long as we take care of Earth and each other. To do so, the first step is to preserve our tiny home, extinguish war, and continue to support scientific advances and discoveries. Even more abstract is the Type 6 civilization. The Type 6 exists outside of time and space and is capable of creating universes and multiverses and destroying them just as easily. It's similar in concept to a deity. It's hard to imagine a story with such a civilization since its perfection and indestructible nature would offer little conflict potential. Unless, of course, you're a lower type civilization waiting to be chewed, swallowed, and digested by one such Type 6 monstrosity recipe for paraversal tragedy. Now, where are humans on the Kardashev scale? If working only within the basic categories, humans are a Type 0 civilization on the Kardashev scale. Literally speaking, because humans have not harnessed the equivalent of the entire energy of Earth, other scientists have said that humans rank as more like 0.7. There has been a study suggesting that finding Yota EV 1024 electronic volt neutrinos could be proof of at least a Type 3 civilization. This would require using a quasar, a very energetic galaxy as a particle accelerator. For comparison, nuclear bomb reactions release a measly 106 EV per reaction. So are we alone in the universe? More than likely not, but are we likely to be visited or invaded by a highly advanced civilization in the future? The jury is still out. Let's hope that when they do arrive, they come in peace. So what are your thoughts on humanity's rank on the Kardashev scale? Will we remain a Type 0 civilization or will we advance and make our way into the stars? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. That's all in today's video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting content like this and turn on the notifications to get all the regular updates. In space, no one can hear you scream, or can they? Sometimes the universe serves up some pretty horrifying scenarios. Lucky, we're safe here on Earth, right? Welcome to In Wonder, and we're showing you just how terrifying the universe can be in 25 scary but true space facts. Number 25. Galactic Cannibalism Straight out of a 70s great horror, it's not just people that eat each other. There are many cases in the universe where a galaxy can collide with another one or multiple galaxies. Research has found that larger galaxies collide with smaller ones every 8 to 9 billion years. Our universe is on track to collide with the Andromeda Galaxy in about 4 billion years, almost certainly destroying all life forms in our galaxy. Eh, just something to look forward to. Number 24. No sound in space Contrary to what many Hollywood films may have you believe there is no sound in space. Due to there being no particles for sound to bounce off, space is completely silent. The only exception would be if you were in the middle of a fairly dense gas cloud. It's so quiet, if you were able to float through space unaffected by the radiation, extreme cold and lack of oxygen, the silence would drive you mad. Number 23. Rogue Planets Sometimes planets like to go rogue and escape the gravity of their parent stars. This doesn't sound too scary until you learn that these planets can be 12 times the size of Jupiter, rocketing through space at 30 million miles per hour. At some point, one of these planets may collide with Earth and it goes without saying it will be pretty catastrophic. Number 22. 
loose skin falls off in space. This fact may scare the germaphobes of the world. It turns out, after a month in orbit, chunks of your feet start falling off. Calluses and dead skin just start floating off your foot after a while. Yeah, no thanks. Number 21. The Biggest Planet in the Universe Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system but is dwarfed by the size of the largest planet astronomers have found in the universe. The Dennis B planet is about 28.5 times the mass of Jupiter. It's currently classified as a gas giant like our Jupiter, but many astronomers suggest it should be classified as a brown dwarf star because of its massive size. Number 20. The Hottest and Brightest Supernova A supernova occurs when a star dies and explodes, expelling an enormous amount of light, heat, and radiation. The Assassin 15LH is the hottest and most luminous supernova astronomers have ever found. At current measurements, the explosion reached about 100 billion Kelvin. For comparison, Earth's temperature is about 288 Kelvin. It also shone at a brightness of 570 billion solar luminosity about twice as bright as any other of the supernovas discovered so far. Number 19. Floating Space Corpses In the early days of space travel, many animals, including cats, dogs, and a chimpanzee, were sent up to the great unknown. Some of these animals and some humans didn't make it back, joining the thousands of tons of space junk hurling around our planet. And if that's not creepy enough, without oxygen, body don't decompose. So this means space is littered with floating frozen corpses. Number 18. White Hole Theoretically, it is possible for white holes to exist in space. They're the opposite of black holes and that nothing can enter into a white hole from the outside. Everything, including light, can escape from them. There are theories that every galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its center and every supermassive black hole spawns a white hole. Number 17. What happens when you fall into a black hole? We've all heard of black holes, but what would happen if you were to fall into one? There are only theories as to what would happen. One theory is that it may split your reality into two parts. In one part, you'll be spaghettified and killed immediately, and in the other, you're unharmed. This is because time doesn't work the same near black holes as on Earth. Either way, I wouldn't try it if I were you. Number 16. The Big Crunch it is theorized that opposite to the Big Bang which started the universe, it may end with the Big Crunch. This theory suggests that the universe will start to shrink and collapse to its earliest state. The Big Rip theory suggests the universe won't stop expanding and at one point everything will be torn apart at an atomic level. Sounds like fun! Number 15. The Dark Flow One minute you're a galaxy chilling at the edges of the universe, the next you are sucked into who knows where. A phenomenon called the Dark Flow keeps pulling chunks of galaxies into unknown places and we don't know why, but it's very reassuring. Number 14. Unexpected Meteors In 2013, 400 people were injured after a meteorite exploded in Russia. As it turns out, meteors can just fall at any moment and rain down on Earth, causing massive destruction, and we might not know until it's too late. Sometimes the sky really is falling. Number 13. The Moon Will Leave Us Every year the moon gets 4 centimeters farther away from the Earth. This doesn't sound like a big deal, but it could have devastating effects in the distant future, affecting tides, water levels, and potentially slowing down the speed of Earth's rotation. Number 12. Venus Is Dangerous While Mars is seen as somewhat inhabitable by humans, one planet we definitely won't be visiting soon is Venus. As it turns out, the surface temperature is around 500 degrees Celsius. Its atmospheric pressure is 90 times that of Earth, and it's constantly raining down acid rain. So we don't think it will be a popular holiday destination once we get the technology to go there. Number 11. The Death of Our Solar System We've looked at theories of how our universe will end. But what about our solar system? One day when the sun's hydrogen is gone, it will expand into a red giant and consume our solar system, destroying it completely. Better pack that SPF 4 billion. Number 10. Space Without a Spacesuit If you ventured out into space without a suit, you would last at most 15 seconds before losing consciousness from lack of oxygen. That's if you're lucky. If you don't expel all the air from your lungs, you will die within seconds from the vacuum rupturing your lung. So if you find yourself floating through the vastness of space without a spacesuit, I wouldn't hold my breath. Number 9. Kelt 9b Kelt 9b is the hottest planet we have found outside our solar system. Its surface temperature is about 4,600 kelvins, just shy of 5,800 kelvin the temperature of our sun. The planet gets its red-hot summers from its close orbit to its parent star, Kelt 9. Number 8. The Average Temperature of Space Scientists have worked out that the net temperature of space is essentially zero. To be precise, it is around minus 270 degrees Celsius, or minus 454 degrees Fahrenheit. That comes out to 2.73 Kelvin with the absolute zero or the coldest physical temperature possible being zero Kelvin. Number 7. The night sky will get dark forever. Go outside at night and you'll find a sky full of stars most of the time. 
However, this may not always be the case according to various scientists. In a matter of a trillion years from now, the sky at night will go totally black forever. Number 6. Even if there are aliens, we may never find them. With the trillions and trillions of stars in the universe, most of which contain planets, it's almost impossible that there aren't extraterrestrials out there somewhere. However, we haven't found them yet and we might never find them. This is because galaxies are moving away from each other, meaning without faster than light travel, intergalactic exploration may not be possible. Number 5. Solar Superstorms Solar superstorms are rising loops of electrified gas reaching 100,000 kilometers high heat that could wipe out Earth's communication satellites and disrupt aircraft technology. We are due for one soon, too, as they occur once every one or two hundred years, with the last one hitting Earth in 1859. Might want to get a Faraday cage for your cell phone just in case. Number 4. Survival Rate of Space Out of 430 people who have gone to space, 18 have never made it home. That's a pretty bad survival rate making space travel the most dangerous mode of transportation so far. Still, space travel is becoming much safer than it used to be. Number 3. Dark Matter We have only witnessed less than 5% of the matter the universe is made of, the other 95% being dark matter and dark energy that we cannot see or understand yet. So until we figure out what dark matter is all about, there is still so much to learn about the material makeup of the universe. Number 2. Rogue Black Holes If the rogue planets didn't sound scary enough, there are rogue black holes as well. In fact, astronomers have found such a Jupiter-sized black hole present in our galaxy. I wouldn't worry, though. It's only speeding through space at about 3 million miles per hour. Number 1. Quasars Quasars are some of the most powerful celestial objects we currently know of. These celestial objects are found at the center of many active galaxies and are the most powerful, energetic, and luminous objects we know of. One quasar emits more than a thousand times the energy of our Milky Way. So what are your thoughts on these terrifying facts? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications to get all the exciting updates.